Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Pei Zhang, a senior quality engineer from Red Hat. Uh, welcome to attend this session. Um, I'm very happy to share this talk uh, OnStack in Telecom How to Achieve Low Latency Computing with OnStack. This is today's agenda. I will give a general introduction about the low latency, the real time KVM. Deploy a real time KVM in the OnStack. And uh, last, I will present our testing results in our testing environment. So let's go to the first part. What's low latency? I will start from some examples. The first one is the telecommunication. Um, uh, currently, some telecom, uh, some telecom uh, companies, they are using the uh, network function virtualization solutions. So which which replace the dedicated appliance with the uh, uh, standard hardware and uh, software to implement their network functions. So this means they have the high uh, performance quality for the um, infrastructure. So um, if there is high latency, their voice, the voice of the communication may be weird. Or the uh, or the phone call may be interrupted. Uh, imagine that you are talking with your friends by phone, and uh, there is and sometimes there is a high latency, and maybe your voice is uh, is delayed or interrupted. That's that's bad and that's weird. The next example is uh, um, vehicle uh, control, especially the self-driving car. Sometimes the uh, a uh, self-driving car need to transmit, need to need data from the data center or the navigation systems. If there is a, a high latency, uh, if the car needs to turn right, turn left or turn right at the crossroad, but there is a high uh, latency, then they, they may miss this operation and they may fail to arrive the destination, or even worse, they may cause a car accident. Uh, the third example is um, stock trading. In the stock market, the price of each stock changes every second. So if there is a uh, high latency, the, it may, uh, the trade may fail, or, uh, peak, or the outdated price may, may mislead people and confuse people. So this example shows that, that the low latency is uh, important. Uh, as far as I know, there are more industries which may also need the low latency. So what's the low latency? The maximum allowed response time must uh, always within a certain value. Let's, the, uh, let's uh, show this chart. Let's see this chart. The x-axis stands for the time. The y-axis stands for the response time. The horizontal red line stands for the latency bound. So the, the, the black box stands for the response time of each request. So um, this means at end time, the response time should uh, always within the latency bound. Let's see the red spot. The, this is not, uh, this is never allowed because it exceeds the latency bound. So the low latency, it means um, the maximum response time must always, within a limitation, must always uh, less than the uh, latency bound. So how to achieve the low latency? We can use the real-time KVM. Real-time is not about the speed. It's not fast. Um, it's, it's about determinization and it's about predictive um, constant behavior. So um, in other words, we can see it as a deadline. Um, some applications, they have uh, the deadline may be second, maybe um, millisecond or maybe microsecond. For some applications, there may be thousands of deadlines in one second. In one second. So this means um, this um, the, the the system must respond with
within before the deadline, otherwise it will cause bad consequences. KVM. KVM is a Linux virtualization technology. It's an open source and it allows a host to run multi-virtual machines on it. Uh, Real-time KVM. Real-time KVM is the extension of KVM. It allows the uh, virtual machines to be a uh, real-time uh, system. Actually, the print RT patches enable the Linux kernel to be a real-time system. And the real-time KVM allows a virtual machine to be a real-time uh, uh, real virtual machine system. So how we deploy the real-time KVM in the OpenStack? Um, OpenStack is an open source uh, software for building the private or public cloud. It's a cloud, plan, cloud operating system which controls large parts of the software, of the network resources, computing resources, and storage resources. It has many projects, and uh, it's, um, it's, uh, there are many uh, deployment configurations. People can choose uh, to deploy some of these projects to satisfy their business requirements or to satisfy their other deployment requirements. Uh, for example, they are Kinsto is responsible for the authentication services, uh, Nova for the network services, and uh, uh, Nutrient for the network services, and Nova for the computing services. So let's back to the KVM, uh, real-time KVM. Uh, the real-time KVM, it provides the real-time com uh, com real virtual machine. So it's mainly, con it mainly re related with the uh, Nova project. So um, with the OpenStack support real-time KVM, actually it's mainly configured in the Nova. So um, in this picture, we can see the um, the, 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 the bottom is a computer, no, a computer node hardware, and we isolate the cores, and we install the real-time KVM, and uh, we set up, uh, we boot the real-time KVM using the labor words. Um, as the real-time KVM, it has strict uh, uh, performance requirements, so it's uh, actually each part of this needs to special configurations. I will talk this one by one. Uh, let's first see the prerequisite for the computer nodes. First part, hardware. We need the standard x86 servers. And uh, another is the real-time deployment. It requires the BIOS setup. We need to disable some options which may cause the high latency in the BIOS. For example, the hyper-threading needs to be disabled. And uh, um, actually, some vendors, they provide a document to uh, set up a low latency system so we can follow these uh, instructions. After the setup, we can use the uh, hardware latency detect tool. We can use this tool to check if it's ready. It has some uh, st standards and we can run uh, maybe 24 hours to check if it's ready. So this is the hardware part. Uh, software part. Uh, software, the real-time, it needs, uh, we, we need to install the real-time packages. We need to install the kernel, the kernel, the real-time kernel, real-time kernel KVM, and the tune, and the twin. And uh, we also need to partition paint the host cores into two parts. The one part is the real-time cores, or isolated cores. The other is the housekeeping cores. So the housekeeping cost is um, the uh, our regular applications they can run on the housekeeping cost, and uh, and uh, also uh, we default use the uh, housekeeping cost. For the isolated cost, they are they are not used uh, only if you explicitly uh, pin 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 your application to the isolated cost, then it will be used. So the isolation is important in the real-time setup. Um, and also we need the huge pain, huge pain support. Um, on the uh, x86 servers, the, the normal uh, memory page size is uh, 4 kilobytes. 
And the heat resistance uh, is one gigabyte or two megabytes. megabytes. Um, there are some uh, the heat rate advantages is um, first it never be swept out. So even the 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 system is under very high memory stress. Uh, memory stress is never swept out, and also because it's a uh, heat rate side, so it has less pages, so uh, it consumes less pages of the system. And another is uh, it has a higher priority because a higher uh, better performance because it has the miss the TLB miss ratio is uh, is uh, more less. So this is the uh, um, software on the computer nodes uh, setup. Um, after the computer nodes setup ready, now we can define a virtual machine using the little word. So there are, um, I need to highlight two points. So one is the VCP, VCP pin. First, the uh, cores used for the virtual machines, they need to isolate it. And this cost should not be overlapped. So which means if we pin one host card to our virtual machine, this card should never pin to another virtual machine. So uh, the, the core cannot be shared with other virtual machines. Otherwise, the performance will be bad. Um, also, uh, besides the base CPUs, we also need to specify the Emulator CPUs, emulator cards for the virtual machines, which is used for the maybe QMU threads. And um, another is we need to specify using the HUD page for the virtual machine definition. Uh, this is an example. In this example, we assign the four uh, gigabyte memories for the virtual machine, and which is using the uh, one uh, gigabyte memory backing, and uh, we set two CPUs, the VCPU zero, each CPU is pinned to individual SD cores, and the VCPU zero is pinned to the CPU, uh, to the host core 18, and uh, the VCPU one is pinned to the host uh, CPU um, 19, so the emulator CPUs will use uh, different cores. And also, all the VCPU, they have the faithful scheduler priority. Uh, this is the example of the uh, virtual machine if definition. Um, after the uh, hardware, after the computer nodes and the uh, VM definition ready, we still need to set up inside the guest, inside the virtual machine. We still need to install the real-time package and uh, we still uh, including the kernel RT packages and the turn the packages inside the gas. And we also need to uh, participate in the cores into two groups, isolated cores and uh, the housekeeping cores. So, um, so this, is the, this is the setup from the computer nodes, from the VM definition and from the setup inside the gas. So, so what's what's uh, what it looks like in the OnStack setup? Um, actually, the deployment of the OnStack is complicated. So, if we follow the one step by step, there may be very complicated. So, there are many tools. In Red Hat OnStack, we have a, a we have, we we are using Director to deploy the OnStack, which only set up in one server. And will be and will de, uh, it will deploy the own stack ready uh, deploy the components and the other setup of other ser many other servers. So for about three parts configuration, we need to config it in the uh, direct in the under cloud config file. Then all of them can be set up. But in the community version, I mean, if you choose uh, to follow the steps of the on stack official doc, maybe we, we need to, the, ma the mainly related uh, configuration is the nowhere part. We need to specify which cards will be pinned to the virtual machines in the Nova config file. And we also need to use a uh, flavor, which uh, sets the real-time attributes, including the dedicated CPU policy and uh, the memory and so on. 
So uh, this is the configuration, and uh, the, let's go to the final part is uh, our testing performance. We test, uh, we mainly test the three standard uh, test scenarios. The first is the um, single VM. Uh, this means we run uh, only one, one virtual machine on a host, and uh, each virtual machine has one real-time CPU, real-time core, and uh, housekeeping core. Second scenario is multi VCPUs. We run one uh, virtual machine, uh, each with 10 uh, VCPUs and uh, uh, eight, uh, um, eight uh, real-time cards and two housekeeping cards. And the third scenario is multi VMs. We run, we only run four VMs, each with a single real-time uh, cards and uh, single housekeeping cards. Um, because the uh, uh, the the real time the performance it may be it may be related to the hardware, so uh, so in our uh, CPU type in our server and in our server type and CPU uh, this is our testing results. We use the we use the cyclic test tool to do the testing. The cyclic test is a tool to test the real time latency. So this is the uh, testing results um, of the three scenarios. We have the average, uh, we have the minimum latency, the average latency, and the maximum latency. Actually, we don't care about uh, much about the minimum latency and average latency because we care we care most of the maximum latency because uh, the maximum they should never be exceed. The latency boundary and our uh, threshold is uh, 40 microseconds. So in our testing, we run these three test cases each uh, each case running 24 hours. So after 24 hours, the uh, latency should should always within the 40 um, microseconds. Otherwise, we there may be problems. So um, and uh, um, the below is our uh, is our the command we used to specify we test the, uh, we test on the real time cards. Uh, besides we uh, during our testing we have heavy stress in the housekeeping cards. We compile kernel in the both in both host uh, cards and uh, uh, guest uh, housekeeping cards. So, which may consume almost 100% of the resources. So, we are doing our testing when the system under high pressure. So, this means that uh, under the high pressure, the real time, the latency should always within this for the 40 microseconds. So, um, this is our testing results. And uh, that's all. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you, thank you.